<sighs> do, 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 do. What's going on on here? Shiny. What's going on guys, it's Dale here from Demsec and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Pwn Drop. So Pwn Drop is basically an alternative to using like a Python simple HTTP server. It's, it's meant to be just as simple as being able to just have your files available and provide a link where you can download them on a target's machine. So Pwn Drop's got a few extra features that make it really, really useful for red teaming. And we're going to be going through these today. We're going to be installing this and we're going to go through a few of the shortcomings that I found while using it. And uh, hopefully those will get implemented sometime in the future. So before we get started, what we're going to need is a VPS and I'm using uh, DigitalOcean here. Uh, there's a link down below if you want to go ahead and get your own DigitalOcean account. Um, there's some kind of promotion attached. It used to be like $100. I don't know what it is now. It might be just $25, but... You can run this on the lowest tier and it works fine. Um, we're also going to need a domain and I already have a domain pointed at my uh, DigitalOcean machine here. And lastly, all we're going to need is a shady file to host. So now we know what we need to have all set up. Uh, there's a link down below for the GitHub for PwnDrop. And thankfully it's all Go based, so they've actually just given us a link here that we can copy and paste and it installs the whole thing, which is absolutely incredible and makes me so happy. So I've already set up my DigitalOcean droplet. As I say, I'm just using the base tier. You don't need a lot of resources for this at all. Uh, and I'm going to start off by, let's first increase the size of this so you actually have a chance of seeing it. And I'm just going to SSH to that machine now. And we are now logged in. I've already gone ahead and fully updated this machine. And obviously I recommend you do that. Make sure all your repositories are up to date. Make sure you've got all the latest packages. And simple as this, we're going to copy and paste that uh, curl command for, directly from the GitHub page and run that. And that's going to go ahead and basically do the entire setup for us. So that's now installed absolutely everything we need. But if we do netstat minus tpan, we can see that it's not actually running despite it says saying it should be. Um, so what we're going to do is just go to if uh, type if config, and we're going to grab the IP address here, and just here you'll see that it's created a folder and used a local pwn drop. So if we cd to user local pwn drop and nano the pwn drop dot ini file. And essentially all we need to do here is set the listen IP address. So open speech marks, paste that IP address, close speech marks, save. And then we can just do dot slash pwn drop start. And then status. And I had to run it a few times just to make sure it hasn't crashed and look it, it's running fine. So one thing that it's gonna do for us is you notice we've not actually told it what the domain is at all. And it's actually really cool. On the first request you make to it with a new domain, it's going to go ahead and do all the automagic Let's Encrypt stuff for us. And we should just be able to browse straight to it with um, the domain that we already have set up. So if we do perndrop.im in your dot network slash perndrop, and that's the default admin interface is slash perndrop. Um, of course, Firefox needs a restart. So now that Firefox has stopped disobeying us, um, we're actually going to do this over HTTPS so we can see this magic Let's Encrypt stuff happening. So it's going to take a few seconds the first time because it's going to generate the certificate. Um, but if we verify it here, more information, view certificate, you can see that it's verified by Let's Encrypt. So it's just done that automatically in the background, which is awesome. And we're just going to create a user account. Obviously, I'm going to go with my name. And then we're going to create an account. Now we're going to have to log back in again. So this is the main interface for Pwn Drop, And up in the corner here, we can change some of the kind of core settings here. We've got the redirect URL. 
Um, and this is basically wherever it's going to take us if we don't have like a legitimate URL to give us a file. And then by default, it's just a Rickroll. So you might want to change that on an actual engagement. And then it's got the secret path, which is the admin interface. Um, we're going to leave it as pwn drop, but if you're using this IRL in the real world, um, you're going to want to change that to something secret. And same applies here. Probably best to change them in the real world, but we're not going to bother for this. And simple as, we've got the upload here, and we're going to upload our password complexity checker from an earlier video. And that's gone ahead and already uploaded. And if we go to change file settings here, um, we've got a few options we can change. So the path here isn't actually related to where the file is on disk. This is what it's going to appear like in the user's uh, URL. So if we do slash demsec slash um, password checker dot doc, for example. So now we've changed the path. Obviously, these file extensions don't match anymore. And if we try and download password checker dot doc and it's actually an exe, Word isn't going to like that very much. So what we can actually do is set it to a redirect path. So we can just make it absolutely anything. So if we actually change it to demsec uh, password checker dot doc dot exe, and what that's going to do is the URL we give to the user will look like this. So if they're checking the URL, they're going to be like, oh yeah, it's just a legitimate doc. But then as soon as they hit this page, it's going to redirect to passwordchecker.doc.exe, which is actually our password complexity checker. What we can also do is upload a facade file. And essentially what this is, is when we enable facade mode, which we'll show in a second, it will provide this file instead of the other one. So in this case, our facade file is going to be in my downloads folder. And we're going to use putty.exe as the facade file. And let's hit save. So that's basically it. We, you, we see we've got the little facade button here, but to start off with, we're not going to bother doing a facade. I'm going to copy the HTTP link. And you can see here in the URL, we've got the pwn drop I'm in your network, demsec and password checker dot doc. And if we hit enter, we can see we're actually given password checker dot doc dot doc dot exe as we'd expect. So let's run over to our Windows machine just so we can see what happens when we enable and disable facade mode. So now we're on our Windows machine. If we download that URL from before, we're going to be asked, what do we want to do with password checker dot doc dot exe like we're expecting? And if we run that, we're going to get the Windows protected your PC, obviously. And if we run anywhere down here, we're going to get our password complexity checker. Cool. That's what we expected. So now from the attacker's perspective, we've just had our shell pop up and now the blue team are going to be on to us. If we enable facade mode here, we don't have to, you know, manually change the file or anything. But if we go back to this Windows 10 machine and download the exact same URL and we do save, we get a password checker dot doc now, and that's not going to run because that's actually got the contents of putty.exe inside of it. So as this is not actually a word doc, if we just, uh, Go here and just for example, if we change this dot doc to dot exe and go yes, you can see that it's actually putty that loads. So here, what you actually want to do is in your facade file is upload an actual Word document. So, you know, I'm, I'm learning as I kind of go along here. If we want our facade file to actually match the, the uh, doc type that we're actually presenting here. And that makes a lot of sense if that everyone's been downloading this password checker dot doc to their mind and the blue team go there and they actually get a dock with no macro in it, then, you know, might actually fly under the radar. So now we're onto the portion where I want to provide a bit of a, of a review of Pwn Drop. So number one, I love the interface. And from what I've been reading, a lot of work has gone into this interface and making it as nice as it is. And when the alternatives are realistically Python basic HTTP server, simple HTTP server, and this, this stands way above and I love the facade features. I love being able to, um, you know, just have this look brilliant interface where you can just upload files and you could actually honestly imagine having a whole bunch of these. I guess a few feature requests from my perspective. There's no real logging here. So there's no real way of knowing if a file has been downloaded and, you know, if it doesn't run successfully. As I alluded to before, if we got a shell, we could then enable facade mode. But at the moment, if they downloaded it and some AV caught it that we weren't banking on, we'd have no way of knowing that the file had ever been downloaded. And as far as I can tell on the server, 
There's no logging, as far as I can tell. There's, I mean, there's data, there's the file, so it's got our file in there. Um, there's the auto cert, so it's got the certificates for uh, the, the domain that we've used. Um, but there's no real logging there, so I guess that's a downvote there, um, or an uh, area for improvement that I'd like to see. I'd also like some option to pr provide a unique link here, because at the moment, if anyone's got this link here, um, they can download the file, and in some situations, you want an additional level, maybe it's just, you know, a query parameter or something at the end of the URL, which adds an extra layer of sec security there to downloading the file. But overall, I think this is awesome. It's a really cool tool. I just saw how simple it was to install. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be using it a lot on my future engagements. That being said, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Massive shout out to K Gretzky again. This is the same guy who created Evil Genix 2, so you know it's pretty good stuff. The links for everything will be down below as always. Um, let me know if you actually use this tool and let me know if, how, how, how it goes. Um, I can see this being really useful. I'm really tempted to just leave it uploaded somewhere even just as like a you know a bit of a dead drop tool where you can chuck a file up and give a link to your friends it's really really simple especially you know currently i use like nextcloud for that kind of stuff but this would be really awesome just to pass files to your friends even um not just for red teaming anyways guys thank you for watching i remember to leave a like if you haven't already subscribed and i will see you next time Bye bye